Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Yaz Magnified and I'm back with another informative video. Today's video is titled, Administrative Agencies Lack Judicial Authority. But before I tackle this subject, as always, I must state for the record, I'm not a lawyer, I do not practice law, and I do not pretend to. All my videos are for informational and educational purposes only. They're all facts and all truth. Nothing more, nothing less. So with that being said, guys, let's get to it. Okay, so I just want to go over this video, right? Uh, because I have an arc who I'm uh, currently assisting with, with his situation. And he have a default administrative order in against him, okay? Which the court is trying to enforce as if this order has some form of judicial authority. Okay, or the court is pretending that this order is binding upon my arc. Okay, so there's a lot of men out here who have administrative orders and don't understand the difference between an administrative order and a judicial order. Okay, so now an administrative order is one done by the administrative agency. Okay, so now you all can see on the screen this document is coming from Hamilton County Child Support Enforcement Agency, right? But it states Ohio Department of Job and Family Services. Then it also states, guys. Notice of administrative hearing to establish a support order. So now, how can you have an administrative hearing to establish any any type of order if the administrative agency is not a part of the judicial branch? Okay? So guys, this is a clear violation of separation of powers, okay? Okay, an administrative agency does not have judicial authority to order anyone to do anything, okay? But in my art case, uh, we've challenged the administrative order, we object to the administrative order, we've done everything, and the court is still trying to adopt and void order that was done by the agency, okay? My arc did not show up to this hearing, okay? Why? Because, the again, an administrative agency does not have judicial authority to summon anyone to appear to come to the agency to have a hearing, which is not done before a judge, okay? If the agency wanted to have some type of, uh, you know, if the agency wanted to try to gain some form of jurisdiction over my arc, they would have had to actually summon him to appear before a judicial judge, not an administrative agency, which lacks uh, judicial authority to order anyone to appear or, or to order anyone to do anything because they lack judicial authority, okay? So now, as you all can see again, the case number I crossed out, we're going to call my arc Mr. Mr. Horton. The case number I crossed out, uh, the address, the child's name, the ch his child's mom name and everything else. I'm not going to read the whole document, guys. I just want to read the uh, beginning of the portion. You all can pause the video and read the rest, okay? But it states, you are hereby notified that an administrative hearing to determine the amount of child support and the payment of child support has been scheduled for 8-4-2021 at 10 a.m. At Helmeton, at Helmeton Child Support at the address below, guys. Right, then it states what? The parents shall provide the Child Support Enforcement Agency not later than the date scheduled for, I can't see that, uh, beginning the administrative hearing, uh, all of the following, right? So they want him to bring all of this stuff to the administrative agency, right? Like the administrative agency has any type of authority to order someone to bring anything, which they do not. Okay, but the administrative agency is trying to pretend as though they have judicial authority acting as a role of acting as they have some type of uh, 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 um, role of judgment or that they can enter a judgment in against you when they can't because they're not a part of the part of the judicial branch. Okay, so this document right here is a clear violation of separation of powers. Okay, so now let's go to the next document. Okay, so now as you all can see on the screen, this is in fact. An order coming from the Department of Job and Family Services. Again, guys, like I stated, you know, earlier, the Department of Job and Family Services or the Hamilton County Child Support Enforcement Agency, both are administrative agencies and lack judicial authority to order anyone to do anything. But let's continue. Top line, guys, it states, you are hereby ordered to appear for genetic testing that's scheduled below. Now, like I stated before, they cannot order anyone to do anything because they're not a part of the judicial branch, okay? They can't enter summonses. They can't summon you to appear. They can't do anything. The summonses must come from the court and it must be signed by a judge. None of this is done from a court. None of this is signed by a judge. This is all administratively, okay? Which they want him to voluntarily participate in, which he refused to do. Why? Because they don't have authority to make him do anything, okay? But let's continue on. As you all can see, the date they scheduled him to so-called appear for this alleged genetic testing was on November 4th, 2020, okay? 
As always, he did not show up, like I stated before. But let's continue on. Let's read the top paragraph real quick. It states, the Child Support Enforcement Agency, CSEA, has received a request to determine paternity. Legal fatherhood for the above-named child. Right? So again, the Department of the Child Support Enforcement Agency, they simply received a request from the child's mom requesting that they get genetic testing. Right? But they now trying to take that request and say what? The next paragraph. Please be advised that you are ordered to submit genetic testing on the date. Now, how can you turn a request into an order? They cannot do that, guys. All this is just simply a violation of separation of powers, guys. A clear violation, okay? So, my arc again, like I stated before, he did not show up because we know what's going on, okay? So, after he didn't show up, they entered the order in. So, now let's go to the next document. Okay, guys. So, now, again, as you all can see on the screen, this time it's what? The Administrative Order for Child Support and Medical Support, okay? But who wrote the order, guys? Hamilton County Child Support Enforcement Agency. Now, how can an enforcement agency create its own orders? It cannot, guys. Okay? Even though they put Ohio Department of Job and Family Services, both of these uh, two uh, administrative agencies are not a part of the judicial branch. So, they do not have legal authority to enter any orders, okay? And he, don't have, he do not have to abide by these orders at all. Why? Because they are not done by the judicial branch. And it's just that simple, guys. But let's continue. Again, I crossed out his uh, child's mom name, and you all can see Mr. Horton again, who's supposed to be the child support obligor. Case number I crossed out and everything else, but let's read it. It states what? The Hamilton County Child Support Enforcement Agency, CSEA, finds that Mr. Horton is the parent of the child name below, and, they, uh, and I crossed the child's name out, right? Then again, it says Mr. Horton has a duty of support for said child. Based on either a final acknowledgement of paternity affidavit filed with the Central uh, Paternity Registry, right? Then it states a, pre a, a presumption of paternity pursuant to Section 3111.03 of, of the Ohio Revised Codes or an administrative paternity determination by the Hamilton County CSEA. So, again, all this is done by Hamilton County Child Support Enforcement Agency. This has no type of legal binding or legal. Uh, 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 standing that he have to partake in at all. Why? Because it's all done by the administrative agency. Okay? Which is, again, guys, a clear violation of due, uh, um, separation of powers. And it's just that simple, guys. Then it states, effective date. If the effective date of this administrative order for child support and medical support is August 18th, 2021. Child and, child and cash medical support. Then it says, uh, my op shall uh, be the child support obligor. Right? And then it says, she'll be the health insurance obligor. So again, guys, they do not have authority to order anyone to do anything. But let's continue. So let's see what happened next after uh, um, the, after they wrote the administrative order. Okay, guys. So now as you all can see on the screen, this is in fact the order that was written up by the agency. Okay? Why? Because we filed a written objection with the uh, Hamilton County Juvenile Court objecting to the administrative agency's uh, violation of uh, uh, um, separation of powers, right? But not only was it a violation of separation of powers, it was also a violation of due process, okay? Why? Because the agency does not have a right to enter order and without allowing my arc, you know, a time to be heard before court, okay? Which is a clear violation of due process as well. So not only are they violating the separation of powers, they are violating his due process uh, rights, okay, to be heard before court, okay, only time he was heard before the Hamilton County Court was when he filed a written objection to the administrative order that they placed in, uh, 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 that they filed it to the court and the administrative judge adopted, okay, but the administrative judge cannot adopt a void order without giving my arc a fair shake in court, okay, which is again, guys, a clear violation of due process and a clear violation of separation of powers, okay, so now let's go over the decision of the magistrate, so now as you all can see, it states clear as day, decision of magistrate, then it states what, motion decision, then it states the motion filed on 8-23-2021 is denied, so again, guys, they denied my ox motion, challenging what I just said we challenged was what, due process, right, and separation of powers, but let's continue. It says both parties and attorney Travers uh, from the CSEA participated in today's Zoom hearing. The defendant failed to state any reasons that the CSEA administrative order is incorrect. But I'm just, you know, we, we, we stated multiple reasons why the order is incorrect. For one, 
the administrative agency doesn't have a right to enter the order. That order might make the order incorrect. Why? Because it's not a part of the judicial branch, so it doesn't have authority to enter the order. That's clear as day, guys. And also, uh, because he didn't have his day in court, that's a clear violation of due process. Okay, but let's continue. I accept and adopt the administrative order and child support worksheet completed by the CSEA. So again, guys, the magistrate signed off on that. So you guys know what we did next. Let's find out what we did next, guys. Let's continue on. Okay, guys, so now, as you all can see on the screen, this is, in fact, a judicial entry from now. This is supposed to be from an alleged judge, okay, coming out of the Hamilton County Juvenile Court. Why? Because we filed an objection to the magistrate's decision, okay? So now we're going to go over what the judge say. Let's see how deep the wickedness and the fraud goes, okay? So you all get better understanding of what's going on and what you all are up against when you're fighting against this crooked society, okay? But let's continue. It states again, guys, Helmerton County Juvenile Court. Again, the plaintiff's name I crossed out. My arguments, the Horton name, as you can see, is still on there. Case number I crossed out and everything else. This is, in fact, a judicial entry. But now let's read it. It states, this matter came before the court on an objection to the magistrate's decision dated November 2nd, 2021. So again, guys, we filed an objection to the magistrate's decision. Again, because the magistrate, again, does not have a right to adopt a void order or an order that was written from an administrative agency that's not a part of the judicial branch. But let's continue. Obligor Horton filed the objection on November 5th, 2021. Right? Then it states the objection of the magistrate decision was timely filed. Because everything got to be done on a time schedule, guys. But then it states this. All necessary transcripts have been filed, properly made a part of the record, and reviewed by the court. The court heard oral arguments uh, of the objection on December 16th, 2021. Now, let's read this line right here, guys. It states, the court finds the objection to the magistrate's decision is not well taken and overrules the same. So now, this is the deception. This is the cover-up, Okay. The court says that the objection was not well taken. Why? Because my arc is exposing uh, uh, the violation of separation of powers and a violation of his due process. And the court does not like that. They'll expect all of us to be ignorant of the simple fact of the things that they're doing to try to manipulate the system in order to keep us trapped and bound by this fraud legal society that we're participating in. Okay? Like I stated, my arc, he's not participating in the shambles and he's not arguing the facts. We're just simply sticking to the fact that they violated separation of powers and they also violate his due process rights okay but let's continue okay then it says the child support enforcement agency csea registered with the court an administrative order of child support which obligor objected to the magistrate denied obligor's objection and adopted the csea administrative order as the order of the court now how can the court adopt the void order as the order of the court it cannot it's impossible because as a matter of fact how can the court adopt an order from an agency that is not a part of the judicial branch. It cannot. Why? Because the order they adopted is not an order because it's not a part of the judicial branch. It's just simply administrative, uh, 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 basically this is an administrative kangaroo court that's going on, man. So, again, like I stated, we, we fighting and we fighting hard, guys. And we're going to prove that as well as we proceed forward. But let's go. It says, uh, Obligo filed the present objection to the magistrate decision, arguing the court lacks personal jurisdiction. We never argued the court lacked personal jurisdiction. We argued the fact that the court uh, violated due process. And we argued the fact that the administrative agency does not have judicial authority or even jurisdiction to enter an order against my heart. Why? Because they're not a part of the judicial branch, like I've been stating the whole video. Okay? So you all can pause that and read that, right? But it says, the uh, one more line right here at the top, it says, The court finds it has personal and subject matter jurisdiction to the issues, to issues, to issue a support order, my, my, my bad guys. Right, but now let's read the last line. It states, the motion filed on 8-23-2021 is denied. The administrative order and child support worksheet completed by the CSEA is accepted and adopted by the court, okay? So again, this is the kangaroo game that they're playing. This is the type of scandal we got to fight. And this is the sham that we're dealing with, okay? So now, let's see what happened next. Let's continue on. Okay, so now, as you all can see... Now, this document is coming from where? In the Court of Appeals, First Appellate District of Ohio, Helmerton County, Ohio. So now, guys, so we're going higher and higher and higher, right? Like I tell you guys, uh, uh, seek your administrative remedy in the state, okay? 
state courts to seek your administrative remedy in the state courts. After you seek all the administrative remedies in the state court, then you can try to go higher to the federal court. But you'll be going to the federal supreme court, not the federal district court, okay? But let's continue on. So now, you all can see it states what? In the Court of Appeals, First Appellate District of Ohio, Hamilton County, Ohio, right? Then it states what? Plaintiff appellee, right? Uh, uh, I crossed this child's mom name out, right? Then it says defendant appellate, who is my uh, Mr. Horton, okay? Again, uh, case number I crossed out, but it states what? Magistrates order to show cause or file a appellee's brief and order denying the appellant's motion for extension of time as moot. Okay, but now let's continue. Let's read this on, guys. Because like I stated, the attorneys, I mean, excuse me, the court is acting like the, the, they didn't violate due process and separation of powers, right? And the agency is acting as if they didn't violate uh, due process and separation of powers. But now let's read this right here, guys. It states, pursuant to the orders of this court, a police brief was due on 6-6-2022. To date, the police brief has not been filed. So now... If they claim that all this is right and they have the right to do these things, then why haven't they rebutted the appeal brief that the appellant filed? Because they can't, guys. Why? Because they know that they clearly violated due process and separations of powers. Okay, but let's continue. It states, accordingly, it is ordered that within 14 days from this order, a appellee shall either file a brief or show cause in writing why this matter should not be submitted to the court and considered on its merits without benefits of such brief pursuant to uh, appeal rules uh, 18c right but let's continue then it states furthermore in the event a police fails to file a brief in this matter a police shall not be permitted to participate in any oral argument that may be scheduled again appeal rule 18c then it states the motion for extension of time by appellants on May 16, 2022 is denied as moot. The amended brief of appellant filed on May 16, 2022 is accepted. Okay, so not only did they accept the brief filed in May, right, by my op, who we filed the brief for, but not only that, the appellant supposed me, the, excuse me, the appellee supposed to file a responsive brief to the appellant's brief, simply rebutting. Everything that was stated in my ox brief, which they can't. Why? Because they know, like we know, it's really clear. It's a clear violation of due process and a clear violation of separation of powers, guys. So I'm going to continue to keep y'all informed on this case. I just wanted to show y'all that we're going up the ladder and how we're applying pressure. We're applying so much pressure that they cannot respond back to the breach that we found into the court. Why? Because they know that they now depending on the uh, on the, uh, appeals court to also violate my ox right to due process and also violate uh um uh uh uh, uh what it was called again guys separations of powers so again guys that's all i'm gonna do for today i just had to go over this information with you all so you all get better understanding that we are fighting against the society known as the legal society that is very wicked guys everything about the society is wicked okay so that's why I tell you all, you must be diligent, man. Study to show that self approved and be ready for this fight. I keep telling y'all, this is not an easy fight, man. But it's a fight worth fighting, especially when you get that remedy, okay? So I need everyone out there to continue to fight. Don't stop. Don't quit. No matter what, man. Just, you know, stay diligent at all costs. Don't take breaks, man. You must stick with the fight all the way through. Because the moment you take breaks, then now you got to go back and start doing everything all over again. You know what I mean? It's going to make it harder not only for myself, but for you guys guys as well then you got to do everything all over again okay so again uh that's what i'm gonna do for the day if you all need my help hit me up in my email that y'all is magnified at gmail.com cop some of that merch guys you know it's, it's good quality merch i'm gonna start wearing a lot more doing live videos so you guys can see it on me as well you know because like i stated if you guys can't afford the gift or whatever but you want to support support by copping that merch guys you know it's, it's, it's good merch. So, again, with that being said, I say shalom.